Hey guys, it's time for a very serious file. So after like a bunch of videos where I just tried to present you very unorthodox lines with lots of interesting and attractive variations, uh, mostly gambits, it's time to actually carry on with uh, building up your opening repertoire with first move e4 and just because of that I decided to show you today how to play against Karakan. Out of all the variations that I've been working on lately, uh, one of the most interesting ones for you could be this modern tonight variations, especially because it's used by Magnus Carlsen, Mwiel, Vashela Grav, uh, Nepomniachi, Wishian, and, and all other uh, top world players. I also uh, used to play these two nights against Karakan and my results are fairly good. Um, let's take a look at how do we reach this position. So after e4, c6, knight c3, d5, you play knight to f3. Here black has a wide range of possibilities. Uh, let's just uh, get started with probably the worst one. It's e6. e6, uh, they neither play French nor Karakan. So basically if they go e6, you just go d4 and it would either leave to the French where, guess what, in whenever French they would have bishop before now. In Stein it's French, knight on f6. In Karakan, they would have an open light square bishop that could come out from c8. Here, they simply don't have anything. You just play d4, you have better development, they have problems with their pieces, and you play better versions for white um, of any French and Karakan. Let's go to the second uh, pretty suspicious move. It's very common in my practice. People like to push this pawn up to d4. Looks like they get some space heading this knight and I just have to say that this logical move leads to immediate disaster for black. So you play knight e2 and you threaten to win the pawn. They go c5. Uh, in case they go d3, you just play, bring it back and playing like this, play queen c2 and just because you want to play c5, probably they will go with c5 and you play with the surprising d4. Uh, when they take, you take and they can't capture on d4 because you have this beautiful knight b5 move, threatening queen, threatening bishop by queen on c2 and threatening knight c7. I won probably a couple of bullet and blood games using this pretty easy trick. I don't think people will play that, they will mainly go with c5 and you go c3. Once again we gotta stop. What happens if they go d3? Some of my opponents in the past went for d3, I played knight f4, threatening pawn on d3, they try to defend it, I come up with check, win this pawn, uh, the worst part is uh, yet to come so we're about to win the pawn on d3 as well. Uh, then d takes c3. On d takes c3 you just take by knight and you want to break in the center with d4. That's why they go with bishop knight c6. Very logical thing to prevent d4. But at first glance it looks fine for black because we're unable to go with d4 but we play bishop b5. When they play bishop d7 uh, just because they don't want to take by pawn and to have like two double pawns we take on c6 and play d4 anyways. After c takes, knight takes, position is much better. Once again, thanks to better development and uh, people for some reason tend to play e5 against me. They feel like very happy uh, to trade the queens off, but you know what? With a better pawn structure and here, uh, obviously they have problems with a7 and c6 pawns, we always uh, are more than happy to exchange pieces. And just because of this, uh, I just have to say that after bishop d2, rook c1, in case they play b, rook b8, you play b3, go with this knight, knight a3, knight c4, knight a5, go after the pawn on c6, and on any knight f6, just make sure to defend the central pawn with f3. What well, is so much better. Uh, you know, when experienced players go for something like this, this is more like technically winning position.
And finally, we just have to check what happens if they go with knight c6. Majority of my opponents in the past did this. You take on d4. It's very important to take on d4 because a couple of my students in the past played queen a4 and it didn't turn out to be as successful as it was as, as it was supposed to be. So after queen a4, which is an exclaim mark move for white, believe it or not, you're already winning. Why? Because you threatened to take on d4 and a uh, few games people played d5 where I took on e5. A couple of games they went with d3 where I played knight d4, threatening to take on d3 and to take on c6. Uh, usually they think that after bishop d7, bishop takes d3 it does not work. But we take uh, by bishop and after knight e5, we play bishop e5, saving this bishop because at the moment, just like you see, both of these pieces are under threat. But you just play bishop e5, you're up a pawn and you're completely winning. And finally, in case of queen a4, bishop d7, you grab the pawn again, capture by queen, and you're just much better. I'm trying, without much explanation, just to give you like a very clear variations how you're either materially or positionally in, uh, so, you know, like in such a big advantage. After knight f3, apart from these moves, they can go with g6. I don't want to study this variation too much. I'm going to tell you why in just a few seconds. You play d4, bishop g7, and go with h3, where you basically prevent bishop g4 and uh, take on e4 by knight afterwards. Find on the channel, in one of my previous videos, uh, playing white against modern defense and how should we play in this type of games. Uh, so do some of, uh, you know, like deeper search of the videos we're just uh, doing here. So they can also play a6. a6 was played once by uh, my best student Alexey Patov. Uh, an idea but after a6 is pretty interesting. You know, in uh, one of the main lines, of the of this two knights variation of the Karakin is bishop g4 you play h3 and then they either capture an f3 or they go with the bishop on h5 and then one of the main options for white is you take on d5 give check and go with g4 and knight e5 what happens with a6 what's so special uh, about move like a6 well the thing after a6 first of all uh, they maybe haven't committed themselves yet with either e6 or uh, bishop g4 or whatever so they just keep this light square bishop open still second thing they haven't played this and committed themselves with this knight so they keep delaying development of this knight as well and thirdly and probably most important when you play d4 and bishop g4 and if you now play h3 uh, or just play e takes d5, c takes d5 and h3, it's not the same position anymore. Now you don't have any more bishop b5 followed by g4 and knight e5. So the whole system is not possible and just because of that uh, you do that, you do play d4, they do play bishop g4 trying to solve the problem of the light square bishop and we do play h3 straight away. I want to show you a game by uh, young Russian GM 2700 uh, who works a lot on his theory and I very much like his approach in his games. His name is Maxim Matlakov. Uh, after bishop f3, queen f3, just take a look at this position very superficially. You would just realize that you definitely have a bit better development and the bishop here. So after e6, bishop d3, knight f6, Matlakov played, uh, for example, it wouldn't be a mistake to do bishop e3 or short castle and to play a game like this. But Matlakov decided to close the center and to somehow open up both of these bishops. Although it wouldn't be possible to take advantage and to take like a full use of these bishops without the next move. So if you like to guess the right, more like it's, it's move. But it's more like complete plan by why it is going to uh, depend on the next move. It's 92. It's 92 where white gets like the full flexibility. Why? Because in case they go with c5, you go c3, 
holding the pawn on d4, defending this pawn, and just getting everything in order. So when they play knight c6, castles, queen b6, looks like d4 pawn is under the attack. You definitely can play bishop e3, but Matlakov did something very nice. Queen f4. He keeps pressuring pawn on f7, uh, which makes, uh, for example, lone castle at any point impossible, and defends pawn on d4. After rook c8, played a3. Why? Just like in any other advanced French, we just want to go with b4, because this is a typical advanced French, a little bit better version for black, because they managed to swap off the light square bishops. But on the other hand, they have problems with these knights and its limitation. So after like c takes d4, c takes d4, knight a5, Matlakov played rook b1. I guess he wanted to defend everything on time. I guess on knight b3 he most likely would go with bishop e 3 and would keep both of these bishops and he would just remain uh, a very nice advantage thanks to the bishop here. So after bishop e7 he played bishop d2, knight b3 and played bishop c3. A very unusual type of plan. Um, or let's put it better this way, maybe an unusual idea because it's pretty usual in advanced French and some of this car compositions. So why bishop c3? You close the c file and basically they have pretty uh, useless knight on uh, b3, pretty useless knight on d7 uh, and look at this monster of bishop and potentially dangerous stuff with, I don't know, let's just say, removing this knight onto the king's side or just going with knight f4, knight h5. Uh, but just take a look what happened in the game. Castles, he improves his bishop, over protects d4 and getting ready for a mating attack. Queen g3, uh, he's opening up possibility to go with f4 and f5. In the game was g6, f4 played king h1 to put this king into safety, shows like great patience in building up an attack, brings this queen back on f3 to be able to prepare g4 and f5, and finally kicked off with g4, played f5, jumped with the knight on f4, and improved the last piece before he crushed his opponent so bad. You have to admit that all the time Black was very unsuccessfully attacking or just playing on the queen side, while White had an upper hands on the king side and eventually he won this game. Just because of that, after a6, d4, bishop, g4, h3, I believe that the bishop h5 uh, makes very much sense because you can't take on d5 and play bishop g4 and play bishop b5. Even though we can't go into that variation, unlike the main option and the main line, we have one tempi. Maybe they have a6 uh, where it prevents bishop e5, but at the same time we have d4, which we wouldn't have in the main line, and we definitely have to play that move. So uh, I'm talking about this position. Bishop g4, h3, bishop h5, you take on d5, come up with check, go with g4, and here you maybe want now, or don't want now, but you have to play knight 5 or c8, you definitely have to play d4 sooner or later. You don't have to do that in this variation with a6. After g4, bishop g6, you don't have to, you can't play bishop b5, but now you already have d4, which is way more, I would say, valuable than a6, and now he just goes with h4. Idea is obvious, you threaten h5. Uh, McShane uh, beat Murphy in uh, London 2018. This Murphy guy played h6. Uh, lots of guys did in the past 96 and even performed well. Uh, although it's bad because of h5, bishop e4, knight takes e4, d takes e4, and knight e5. You gotta consider this variation absolutely better for white. Dominating position for white, bishop pair, control of the center, and uh, don't be uh, like confused why this guy claims that white should be better because we're down a pawn. Don't, don't worry about that. In case of uh, queen d4, you just take on c6, queen d1, king d1, you will get the pawn back on e4, but eventually they're gonna be left with 
I remain with this pawn on a6 and pawn on c6 which are weak. Uh, pawn on e4 is about to fall and thanks to the bishop pair, white is like so much better. In case of knight takes e5, d takes e5, queen d1, king d1, I just want to play uh, bishop g2 and king d2. Once again, thanks to the bishop pair, white is so much better. And finally, if they take by knight, I just play bishop a3. Uh, and afterwards, we go with bishop g2, c3, uh, once again, so, uh, so much better type of game for white. All things considered, let me just show a game between um, uh, Luke McShane and Murphy. After h6, knight e5, bishop h7, of course, no one wants to give up this bishop. Queen f3 threatening mate on f7, knight f6, and kicked off with g5. I very much like this move because it's a little bit difficult to calculate during the game because it looks at first glance that after bishop e4 you're about to lose some material. After knight a4, knight a4 rook h1, he probably didn't count on this move. Very nice one, rook f1, king f1, d takes e4, and McShane played queen b3. The game ended immediately. What a nice win! What a beautiful way to beat up your opponent in 16 moves. Just like I said, the game was played back to 2018 in London. So far, we've seen all the, I would say, worst possibilities for black. e6, which is absolutely bad. a6, which is an interesting waiting move that could be played by black players and it's pretty common uh, in some blitz or rapid tournaments uh, although just like you see it's better for white and we could have seen d4 uh, which looks very tempting for black uh, but basically it's one of main ideas of these two knights um, opening against Karakan. So it's time for some serious stuff. By the way, don't forget g6 after d4 and h3 goes into the modern defense. Find that variation in some of the videos. What does it mean? It means that we have to check now three moves for black d takes e4, knight f6, and bishop g4. Those are three main lines for black. Uh, knight f6. I would start with this one. Uh, one of my uh, students, he's, uh, he's a grandmaster. Uh, he had such a great success with this two knights variation against Karakan, uh, but against uh, this variation at f6 he played three games and lost three times. His name is uh, Milan Zajic. And uh, unfortunately at the time when we analyzed all these positions uh, he wasn't familiar with the ideas I'm about to show you right now. Why? Because simply uh, in the meantime something really extraordinary happened and uh, appeared for white and I just want to share that with you. That's why I'm telling you what I'm explaining to you right now and what I'm giving you as analysis it's like a very serious opening repertoire for white against Karka. So after e5, knight e4. Those who play knight f to d7 I played a game, Bloods game a few days ago. I played d6, typical Karakan uh, pawn sack that leads to a massive initiative for white, f takes e6, d4, knight f6. In case they go with g6, just break it with h4, it's screaming to be done because after this h5, e5, knight g5 threatening to almost win the queen or just this bishop, knight f8 and queen f3. Beautiful position, they can hardly stop uh, at this queen f7 and this actually leads to a devastating attack for white. So after d4, knight f6 is the move and I analyze this uh, and here I very much like h4. It's another attractive move that is aimed against g6. For example, in case of g6 you just go with h5. Uh, so they hardly can develop, look at this. What are they going to do with the dark square bishop? They gotta play e5 and e6, but they can't because this pawn is cannot be developed. Your knight is just holding and taking control of e5 very strongly. And they can't play g6 because if they play g6 h5, you sack this exchange and play knight e5. Boom! King is almost in checkmate. Uh, so this is either mate or serial material loss. Uh, should be inevitable here. Uh, just because of this, everybody goes with knight e4. And when I mentioned student of mine, 
uh, all his opponents went with this knight e4. He played this uh, knight e2. Actually, one of the last games that he played in desperation, he didn't use knight e2. And that's kind of confusing for me because now nowadays desperation is considered to be fantastic for white. He played some uh, something else like queen e2, which I, I'm not a big fan of that. So what's the point? You play knight e2. You wanna. I, I don't know if you see that. Uh, if you see this, and if you figure that out, but after this unstandard retreat, uh, we just threatened to win the game on the spot and to d3 to be played and almost to uh, trap this knight. Okay, it can go to c5, but then you're just going to keep on chasing it. Uh, you're just going to remove and transfer this knight on e2 onto the king's side and build up a strong initiative. Um, they have to play queen b6 and threaten mate in one. Uh, those who play bishop g4, they make huge mistake. It's a very common move in bullets and bullet games against me because it, it should be refuted by a little bit unusual actually a lot unusual not a little bit knight after g1 and you know threaten f3 if they give up the bishop uh, we're just gonna win a bishop here if they move the knight we're just going to start chasing off all these pieces like crazy and it's gonna be so much better for us all things considered after knight e2 they have to play queen b6 and we go with d4 they go e6 knight g3 c5 bishop d3 knight to g3 I want to show you a game between uh, Nigel Short and Caruana. Caruana once played knight e6 here. And after knight e4, d takes, bishop takes, c takes, castles, bishop d7. A very important move as a part of White's plan is the plan and the move with a3. It stops knight before and bishop before and some of the variations once we manage to play rook one But more importantly, it's going to give you an important pawn at once uh, for expanding on the queen side with b4. So after h6 to prevent at some point knight g5 and bishop g5, uh, maybe even to play g5 themselves, rook e1, over supporting probably the soul of our game, it's the pawn on e5, rook d8, uh, h3, and after h3 uh, g6, he probably played h3 because he didn't want to face bishop before and had to uh, create shelter on h2. Uh, Karana played g6 and now Nigel Short played b4. I spoke about this uh, expanding move. So after bishop g7, Karana went with bishop f4, knight e7 uh, and took on d4. Sorry, Short went with this. I have to say that this was a pretty convincing game by Nigel Short versus one of the uh, best players in the world uh, and uh, this just makes our line even better uh, take a look at this one uh, short had like better development uh, better control of the game uh, better placement of his pieces while Karana was like very very uh, I would say uh, badly developed and very passive the game was played back to 2017 Although, uh, after bishop d3, so once again, we're talking about knight f6, e5, knight e4, knight e2, queen b6, d4, and after e6, knight g3, and after c5, bishop d3. Uh, that knight c6 variation was played once by Caruana, and ever since this game uh, that we've just seen, played by Nigel Short, you know, it just went into the history. Although the problem all these years was knight takes g3. And there was a famous game between Carlsen and Grishchuk uh, where Carlsen played h takes g3 uh, and after h takes g3 I mean you know what without any thinking I would play a takes g3 in normal circumstances and Carlsen won that game. It was a game played on ICC and the internet back to 2016 uh, Position is absolutely unclear. Even though you open up the H file, and I remember my student lost to Kuzubov in a game like this in uh, very uh, severe complications. Although, believe it or not, desperation nowadays is considered to be almost refuted and it's considered to be fantastic for white. The real move is F takes G3. F takes G3 should be considered. I'm gonna go that far 
as the refutation of this knight f6 third move in two knights variation. I already used like after g3 in a couple of my uh, fast time control games. I easily manage to win my games. What's the point? When they take on d4, we play castle. We threaten knight g5. Um, I'll show the game uh, between Vashel Agrav and Vei. The game was played on chess.com. It was Blood's game, but it's exactly uh, the way what is supposed to treat this opening. h6 to prevent knight g5. Uh, makes sense, and most of players do this one. a3. Not just because he wants to stop knight c6 followed by knight b4, which would disturb the light square bishop, but because we want to go with b4 to expand on the queen side. After knight c6, we play b4. When they go a6, a beautiful positional move by white. Vashia played g4. g4, because he wants to play g5, he wants to go with his g5 and if h5, g6, if takes knight takes, uh, or just bishop takes, but it's just terrible game. But of course, knight takes knight e5, knight f7 is winning. Bishop e7 to prevent g5. And now Vashia played queen e1. I like this move because he still wants to go at some point with g5 and he over supports pawn on e4. Also, this queen can go either on f2 or on g3, depending where the unit is. After bishop d7, rook b1, he just wants to advance with a4 and b5. Knight a7, bishop b2, knight b5, uh, played queen f2. Uh, obviously, um, way he was about to lose this pawn on d4, uh, that would just mean that I mean, this pawn on d4 is not a threat for us, so sooner or later it's going to be uh, dropping. So after castles a4, knight c7, bishop d4. Uh, do you know what's the worst thing? The way he resigned because he didn't have a way to lose, um, to defend losing the squint, or in a better case scenario to lose the knight, but of course on um, this level it just means uh, you got to resign. What a nice win! Michelle Agrav beat 19 moves. Uh, Wei Yi, who's one of the best tactical players in the world at the moment. After F takes G3, another line went with C takes D4, Castles, and Iturizaga played against Bakura Knight C6. Also nice move, a very logical one. He goes after the pawn on E5 and maybe at some point want to go with Knight B4 after the light square bishop. A3 secures this bishop on d3 with a3 and wants to expand with b4. After bishop d7, b4, a6, queen e2. Makes sense, very similar to Vashia's idea. Sorry, he can't take on e5. And you over support and you just want to go with g4, g5 afterwards. That's what he did. Uh, play g4. Maybe he's even threatening as he over supported and defended this pawn on e5. Maybe he just wants to go with g5 h takes knight g5 or g5 h5 g6. So um, black played g5 and look the finish of the game. Bishop d2, bishop e1, and bishop g3. He got ready uh, not just to over support the pawn on e5, but at some point. Uh, to face any f6 with e takes f6 and probably uh, over this x phrase uh, he gave such a great role to this bishop on g3 after a5 played b5 a4 bishop f2 threatened this pawn on d4 look at this nice maneuver knight d2 threatened knight b3 played knight b3 threatened on d4 played this one and played very surprising queen f3 this guy didn't fill the right idea of queen f3 uh, so f6 uh, was a big blunder but his position was already like very difficult pawn on d4 was about to fall and he managed to win the game afterwards what was the point after f6 he came up with check and boom queen takes c3 this is how bakra in tournament game beat iturizaga in linares 2019 and uh, we're done with knight f6. It's not anymore a problem. And now I have to show you a move that is considered to be one of the most common reactions by every Karakhan player. It's d takes c4. You just capture by knight. Uh, using this line for like, not just last couple of months, but years, I can tell that majority of my games and my opponents go with this d takes c4 move. Uh, after knight takes e4, they just go with knight f6. I want to 
gonna stop here and to tell you that 97 just transposes into this type of variation whether they want to jump with d7 knight or g8 knight we play queen e2 for all of you who want to be a tricky bastards so if you want to be hated by your opponents you should be going with this queen e2 why because you certainly expect by everyone to go with this one and ta da 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 smothered checkmate uh, that happened to me in a couple of bullet games because people uh, show like a tendency of playing uh, some pre moves uh, but of course the knight dnf6 should be played here and here they just want to take on e4 and once again develop another knight on f6 which would chase away the queen with a tempi here you have a pretty nice looking move that transposes into the main line. It's knight e5. Knight e5 goes after the f7 pawn that threatens knight g5. Uh, when they play g6, you just play knight g5 and they have problems because they would have to play knight h6 and you can't even, you know, like kick off with h4 and h5. In case knight e4, you just capture and looks like they solved the problem. They solved the problem because looks like you're about to lose tempi. Bishop c4 is the key move of this variation. But I'll go into this uh, position from different other moves. By the way, this is going to be probably um, the main subject of our analysis in this lecture. In case of queen d5, I also faced that a couple of times. You just take it and bishop b5, which means they can't cover themselves with the bishop if they go like this. A very basic and elementary tactics with knight f7. So after knight e4, they all go with knight f6. And here we go with that uh, very fashionable uh, line by white lately that goes with queen on e2, mm, uh, mainly uh, thanks to the game played by Chinese GM Lu Shang Lei, who used it and crushed uh, somebody in, I believe, Chinese championship with this queen e2. What's the point of this? Once again, I guess we all want knight bd7 to be seen in our games, then we have smothered mate. Those who play bishop g4, I've seen it, i faced it like a couple of times, you play h3, and when they take on f3, don't take by queen, but first uh, make intermediary move, take by queen, and you gotta be better. I play like probably 10 to 15 games in all kinds of time controls with queen d5 and this position really looks fine for white unless you know the best move uh, it leads to another pleasant and slightly better position for white since after first of all you threaten on b7 you threaten bishop c4 so after queen b3 a takes b3 uh, it's an open a file it's a bishop pair for white and a pretty healthy pawn structure at least healthier than uh, black's game uh, all those facts uh, give white fairly is a middle game or we can just say afterwards end game and in case they play after h3 bishop h5 you go with knight takes f6 and play this d3 uh, this is a strong positional move that is based on limitation of the bishop on h5 and after uh, we want to go with g4, bishop g2, and I always like to push my pawn up to a6 so they can't make long castle. Of course, if they do it, we can always launch the action with b4 and b5. Just because of this, after knight e4, queen e4, knight d7. Um, knight d7 is the main line. Of course, you play bishop c4, but we'll discuss this position. Let me show you uh, one of the most popular continuations by black lately. Uh, this at first sight uh, hyper solid move uh, leads to a small but a long lasting <coughs> advantage for white how so when they play queen d5 you play queen h4 you don't want to take on d5 that's first and very important thing now i'll show you my tournament game i'll show you my tournament game against jovanovic uh played in 2017 uh the only move is queen e6. That guy played bishop f5. During the game, uh, he took some time to play this bishop f5. I'll tell you what was my thinking. I knew that if he plays bishop f5, 
I'm, uh, I might go with this with the following trick and I said in case my opponent goes with bishop f5 I will straight away go with bishop c4 without any thinking so maybe he's gonna fall for the trick thinking that he he just equalized after like two minutes of thinking my opponent played bishop f5 I you know like right off the bat without any thinking I played bishop c4 and my opponent looked straight into my eyes and played queen e4. And he made like a facial expression like, uh, what do we do, man, here? Why do we fight here? Let's go and get some beers. But this was the moment of the game where, where he came in complete shock because I took on e4 and came up with one of basic tactics. Imagine this was tournament game. The guy's an FM. So he captured by king. I played knight g5, took on e4, and won the game. You can find this game in database. Just because of this, lately all players do queen d6. And those who do queen d6, you just play d3. Uh, d3 because you defend pawn on c2. And d3 because you open a possibility for bishop f4. After e6, bishop f4, queen b4, bishop d2. In my opinion, better thing is what one Indian guy did. But after Long Castle, uh, Rosum, a Canadian, or actually Rosum, uh, got a very, very big advantage uh, here because he's about to go with Rook H to E1 and uh, got a huge advantage. He's got nice uh, advantage in terms of better development and position looks like so much um, promising for White. In the game was. Uh, after queen b4, bishop d2 in one game was queen b2. This is game of Lu Shanglei, actually creator or this queen e2 idea. And uh, this was played in uh, China um, in 2017. He played castles. This guy wasn't interested in taking on c2 second pawn. You can just take a look at this. It's much better for white anyways. Played b5 because white is threatening rook b1 followed by rook b7. Rook b1, queen a3, and Lu Shangli played a beautiful move for uh, running an initiative. Threatens on f5, threatens on b5. Uh, possibly he's, you know, like just moving pieces around the queen and makes this queen feeling very uncomfortable in this position because it's about to be trapped. So, all things considered, uh, they have to play queen d5 and after queen h4 to go with queen e6, not to go with bishop f5. And when you play bishop e2, queen g4. I played this in like a big number of blitz games. After queen g3, queen g3 and h takes g3, uh, white just looks better. Um, I remember I was an official commentator of the European Club Cup. It was played in Novi Sad. Uh, in Serbia 2016 and um, I, I was broadcasting at that time a live battle between two strong GMs uh, between Bakra and another guy was was not a GM but he was a pretty strong uh, IM Kraisel I believe by now he's a GM and um, uh, White went on for this promising a queenless middle game and eventually won in a classy endgame style. Let me show you what happened in that game. In that game, uh, Kraisel played c5. There is no much to think here. You just have to go with d4. After e6, bishop e3, knight e7 and long castle. But Kray easily won this game. Why? First of all, he had an open h file. Secondly, he had a better development and safer king. Thirdly, uh, he had three against two in this typical type of pawn structures. Bakra won this game fairly uh, easy. I very much like this approach and uh, this is how you actually have to improve your chess uh, playing this kind of games on pawn majority, better development, open files and that's a real chess. So we're now coming to the line where after Queen e2 Net f6, queen e2, they take on e4. Uh, those who play uh, bishop g4, you just go h3. If they take on f3, remember first knight f6. Those who play bishop h5, you just go with knight f6, uh, d3, and g4, and a4. So all things considered, they have to play knight a4. 
after queen e4, and literally everyone goes for that. Uh, I showed you what happens if queen d5, what happens if knight d7? Then you go with bishop c4. They go with knight f6, and we once again should transpose into Lu Shangli's game and uh, against Muhammad played in Doha 2015. That's the very first moment uh, when I realized the desperation exists and could be played by white. And the move is 95. White threatens mating one. Surprising thing is that I probably played this position probably more than hundreds times in bullet, blitz, rapid, even once in a tournament game. Uh, games for white are very easy and uh, I think this is easy type of position to be played. Uh, so after knight e5 we're just getting kind of French knight. Thanks to this attractive move this whole line became so popular for the past few years and judging by my experience over the web and in those uh, real games that I played it really guarantees white more than promising, promising attacking chances on the king's side. Let me show you what happened there. After e6, queen e2. Uh, originally, they can never move this French knight on e5 with knight d7. A uh, couple guys tried it, but after knight f7, they should call it a day. They can't take by king because of queen e6 checkmate. If they go with uh, anything else, it's just fork and they're lost. Uh, originally, when this line appeared, was after bishop e7. Lu Shengli wanted to play d4, so he played c3, castles, and d4. His opponent played knight e7. He could have gone with short castle, which probably would be a reaction by 85% of us. But he went with h4. I like this aggressive move, and uh, that was one of the main reasons why he managed to win the game so easily. After knight e5, he takes c5 play this centralizing queen move queen e4 he just threatened he just prevented bishop d7 stop b6 and uh, he's just threatening bishop d3 and going with g6 and h5 with almost devastating uh, attack on the king side after bishop d7 this guy was ready to give up pawn on b7 but now uh, for those who think they are like good tactical players guys let's go take some time and find it the move is bishop h6 what a beautiful move by white um, at the point is if they take you just go bishop d3 and you can defend checkmate on h7 in the game was f5 lu Shanglei captured rook f6 and played another beautiful move in terms of you know like keeping the uh, the initiative played castles, queen b7, took on a7, played king b1, removing from check, took on d7, and eventually won this game. Um, and finally, everybody in the meantime uh, went uh, against me with bishop d6. You just go castles, they go castles. Uh, a couple of players tried early queen c7, d4, and c5 to undermine my knight. We should be fine, even though it looks logical. It's not a best move. You should carry on with development. And when they go like this, for k to d1. And after castles, rook to d4. I'll show you how I won like a couple of games. After b6, because it's so logical to complete development, rook d1, rook d8. Let's go, tacticians why to move so i want those couple of games with nine f7 i'm just opening up my bishop my rooks diagonal and you can clearly see the witnesses of the d6 bishop and rook on d8 so uh, that's why majority of players go with castles you play d4 and let's go those guys who play knight d7 you just play bishop f4 you just play rook f3-1, you just play uh, a version of Lu Shang Lei game. Uh, this is a game of mine, uh, where I decided to play short castle and decided to play with this bishop pair. What I very much like about my position is this pawn on e5, that gives me great attacking possibilities on the king's side. So, I just have to say something affirmative for myself. I played quite an astonishing uh, finish here 
and executed my opponent in a pretty big style. B6, I used my favorite thing, rook lifting. Rook d8, rook g3, I was getting ready for bishop h6. And when my opponent went for bishop f8, his position looks extremely solid at first glance. I played bishop h6, king h8, I can't do anything but queen g4. I'm threatening on g7, and I'm threatening on g8 mate in case he captures. Play the only move, and I said, perfect, because now I have good control of the game. Already my position looks like so much better. So with this rook lifting idea, bishop h6 and queen g4, I managed to almost crush my opponent. He went with rook d5, desperately giving up one of these pieces to just say like, okay, man, I don't want to resign, but I just want to play like a couple of moves. I played bishop f6, king g8, and played rook to h3. As you see, h6, queen f4, threatening rook takes h6, king h7, and here, uh, guess how did I carry on with the attack and what did I do to my opponent? He didn't expect this finish. I very much like my next move. Uh, I wasn't greedy. I didn't want to take rook on d5. I was just thinking like I can do it whenever I like. So why should I care about that or why should I just like rush with it? So I played g4. My opponent didn't feel the point of my move and played bishop b7. Let's go tacticians. White moves and wins. Well, if you found queen h6 then you're really good tactical players. Bishop h6 and g5. One might say, okay, it looks easy or, you know, like whatever, but you just have to know that this was a pretty fast time control and that when I played like queen f4, I just have to see this g4, queen h6 and g5 idea. He can stop rook takes h6 followed by rook h8. And instead of knight d7, they can play queen c7. You just go with the rook e1, uh, supporting knight on e5, and basically fighting against c5. When they play c5, now you know you'll see the point of rook on e1. I took on c5, so now I'm defending knight on e5. Uh, my opponent, uh, my opponents t uh, usually take by bishop, but there are players who take by queen. If they take by queen, you have two plans. You can play b3, bishop b2, rook a to d1, where you just have better position. Reminds me of some Kirkan main lines. And uh, you can play bishop d3 straight away, where your bishop goes on g5. You threaten bishop f6, followed by queen e4, uh, double threat. Uh, if they play bishop b7, uh, I want to gain bishop f6, queen g4, queen h5, threatening mate. And when they play f5, knight f7 fairly easy. In case they play queen e5, what do I have to tell you here? With the bishop pair, once again pawn majority on the queen side, 3 against 2, I gotta be much better. But I'm especially uh, happy when uh, I play against my opponents like this and I make the following move. So for all of you who think you're like so good at your strategical play, let's go guys, make a move for white it's strategically absolutely the best for white here. Well, I give you enough time. I mean, you could have stopped the video and you should be going with F3. Why, why F3? It's called barrier. You're just closing uh, this bishop, uh, making like uh, these two, this E4 square impossible uh, for, for uh, any of actions for black. You also uh, pretty much limited the activity of the light square bishop and f3 does a great job with pawn majority, bishop pair, and this barrier against the light square bishop, white is technically so much better in this type of game. If you want to learn how to play this type of games, probably you should analyze a queenless type of middle games played by Kramnik. And finally, if they play c5, we just take bishop c5, bishop g5, and rook a to d1. Uh, leads to similar positions to typical Rubenstein line, rook f d1, and I played like a whole bunch of games here. A very nice and easy approach is rook to d4 before you play bishop d3. I usually used to play bishop to d3. That's not a point. Play rook to d4 first. That's an excellent mark move. And uh, I especially like this one because it looks like you want to 
double up your works. Maybe you do want to do that in some of the variations. But the real point of this is bringing the bishop to d3 and actually removing and uh, transferring your rook onto the king's side where you would just build up a strong attacking possibilities. And finally, we just came to the point where we just have to check the main move for black. It's bishop d4. It's played by Karpov all these years, Drev, and all these best and most solid Karakan players. Uh, we just go with h3 and they can take and play bishop h5. If they play bishop h5, I'm gonna give you two alternatives. Uh, one is e takes d5, uh, c takes d5, bishop b5, g4, knight e5, and d4. I spoke about it. This was what Nakamura played against Grishchuk in Beijing 2012. After a6, h4, f6, captured, played queen d3, and played bishop e3. Nakamura won the game. Uh, it was a long-lasting game. He was a little bit better, and he uh, grinded down his opponent, and they won Chile won that game. Although, even though this is a little bit better for White, for all of you who like something like more creative or just maybe even more solid in terms of some variations, you can go with d4, e6, bishop d3, and you just wait for this knight to be developed on f6. I played a tournament game like this against one Fide Master, 2300, and I easily won. Plan is e5, g4, and bishop takes g6. When they play h takes g6, you just play a hyper-flexible knight e2 move. So any c5, c3, knight e6, and now you're just reaching g2 with this king and using the artificial uh, two moves, uh, sorry, using the last two moves with king f1 and king g2, you just like artificially make castle and go with a displine. This is famous game between Nigel Short and Hoffman, and that's why we call this variation Nigel Short's plan against the Karakan. All things considered, this, this really, really looks good for white and looks hyper solid. And finally, uh, what happens if they take on f3? We just take by queen. If they take on e4, they have to play six to hold the peak of the uh, pawn chain for black. In case they take on e4, you take by knight, knight d7. Watch out, you can play bishop c4. That's what I did once in blitz game because we're just losing this bishop here and that's the best advantage for us. We play d4, knight f6, bishop c4, a6, castles, queen, knight e4, queen e4, knight f6, and queen e3. I believe Vashiel Agrav uh, had a similar game in Pro League and won, uh, won fairly uh, easy game with white pieces. Uh, after e6, I'm going to give you a very nice plan uh, that leading Croatian player and ex-European champion Šaric used in one of his games. It's d3, bishop d2, and now you uh, go with g4. This is a very nice uh, attacking pattern by white. Uh, you just have to check as many games as possible in order to realize the main ideas. You just threaten g5 to chase away this knight. I got to go h6 and you play long castle position looks very very nice for white. In case they play bishop b4, always challenge them with a3 to see will they go back to a5, where you usually go after d4 by black knight b1 and take by knight. But this guy brought the bishop back to d6. Of course you just play h5, fairly primitive g5 to launch the attack, e takes, c takes, knight b5, took on d6, played bishop h3, and this guy uh, probably missed this bishop e6 move in case of rookage one bishop c8 and resigned the game. This was the game played in uh, Russia 1998. Kamat uh, Galev was white, and uh, even Sharic against Zelchic was bishop d6. Of course, Sharic used the same idea queen b6, g5, h takes, h takes, rookage one, queen h1, and uh, he went with bishop e2, which is a very nice idea. After knight f2 fork, looks like dangerous, but don't worry. You just go with intermediary move and play rook f1. You're down a pawn, uh, but after bishop c5, knight a4, took on c5 and won the piece. After queen a2, he was winning against uh, also one of top creation guys, Zelchic. 
Guys, uh, I hope you like uh, this very serious lecture uh, on Karakan. This was like continuation of creating your serious opening repertoire on this channel, first move E4. Uh, and of course, in the meantime, we're just going to carry on working on crazy Gambit stuff. And uh, thanks for all your support and for all those emails where you just confirmed that you like the channel, you like the openings, and to even a couple of guys who told me that you like my approach that I actually brought once again life in this game to you. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye-bye.